Hi, and welcome to Naturally Inspires You. I'm so excited to share today's episode of Marvelous Moms with you, from my living room to yours. Today's guest is someone who is very special to me, someone who I look up to, I admire, someone who I've known since birth. She is my go-to person for almost everything, a true blessing in my life. Meet my sister Shirley from her living room in Hong Kong. Shirley. Hi, Shirley, and welcome to Natalie Inspires You. Hi, Nats. Thank you for having me on Marvelous Moms. Happy to be here. You know, by just being here and agreeing to be here, you have just made this show special. So thank you. And why don't we start by you introducing yourself to our viewers today? Yes, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Shirley, a working mom, uh, blessed with triplets, one boy and two girls. I'm an airline crew for the past 25 years, and I still enjoy every bit of my traveling job. Having said that, I'm quite a home bird, enjoy baking in my free time, and I'm so happy here to be here to share my experiences with you all. You definitely are one busy mom, Shirls, but I must add a marvelous one for sure. But let's speak about that a little later in the show. But for now, I am deeply grateful to you for choosing to step out of your comfort zone. And for my viewers today, I'd like to say that Shirley is here to share with you one of her life stories, a mighty testimony, a big turning point in her life that happened 10 years ago. Shirley? Nat, may I read out my testimony to you all? Of course, of course, please go ahead. In March 2011, I found out that I had breast cancer. As the doctor was giving my husband and me the diagnosis, we could only hear the words coming out of his mouth, but nothing was sinking in. We left the doctor's clinic as if someone had drained every bit of energy from our bodies. We walked around aimlessly, not saying much to each other, but just held each other's hands. When we finally reached home, we informed our family about the devastating news. It was the darkest moment of our lives. My entire world came crashing down on me. I was completely shattered and nothing anyone said made any sense to me. I was convinced that I was going to die because to me, cancer meant death. I was angry with God. I questioned him, why me, Lord? I don't fall in this category. I'm too young to get cancer. Nobody in my family has it, so why me? What wrong did I do to deserve this? Haven't I done enough good? Why are you giving me this heavy cross? I could not accept this. Thoughts of dying terrified me. My children were so young. They were just six. How would my husband cope with bringing them up? All these thoughts kept crowding my mind. My faith was tested yet again. I cried day and night. I was not able to accept and surrender this to the Lord. But the Lord always puts angels in our lives so that he can work through them. My husband, John, has been my angel. He stood by me every step of the way. There is no one on this earth who would be able to handle me better. And I thank the Lord every day for John, who said to me, we can do this together. And in my deepest, darkest moments, he picked up the pieces of my shattered life. My family, church community, and prayer warriors in India stormed heaven for me. The Holy Spirit had begun working in me. And the night before the surgery, I slept so peacefully. I woke up renewed. I was able to accept and surrender my burden to the Lord, who is a kind and merciful God. What happened next? was a miracle and one which changed my life completely. The doctor said the worst case scenario would be that the surgery would be two to three hours long, depending on how deep rooted the cancer was. I would have tubes to drain the fluid and would have to be in the hospital for at least one week. 
but the Lord had better plans for me. I came out of a two-hour surgery with not even a single tube or drip attached to me. The doctor said I could go home in two days. I held the doctor's hand to my head and said, thank you, doctor, for letting my God work through your hands. Thank you. And he looked at me not understanding what I meant. The Lord showed me his powerful hand of healing and protection. Praise our mighty God, for he never fails us. Matthew 7.7 7 says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. What followed is just amazing. I felt so energized and totally overcome by the Holy Spirit, praising and thanking him for giving me a renewed life and a chance to glorify his name. What comparison is my suffering, a small surgery, to the thousands of lashes the Lord has borne? What comparison is my treatment of just six sessions of chemo to the Lord having his hands and feet pierced with huge nails to the Holy Cross? What comparison there is in me losing my hair during chemo to the Lord being stripped of his garments and made to carry a heavy cross? It is written, for there will be not a hair on your head which will fall that I will not know of because I hold you in the palm of my hands. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Luke 21, 18. My sufferings were way too insignificant. For the Lord gives us no more than what we can bear. To this day, there is no more why, Lord. But instead, thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me your mighty hand. The Lord blesses us always. But along with the blessings comes the storms. My fiercest storm has been my battle with cancer but the Lord brought me out of it. Today, I feel blessed to share with you that 10 years after my diagnosis, I'm 100% cancer-free and cured of it completely. All praise and glory to our mighty God, for he is a wondrous and marvelous God who loves us tremendously. I'm humbled by his love and honor his presence in my life. He leads and I follow in confidence knowing that the path he has set for me is one filled with his love and grace. Amen. Amen to that, Shirley. And um, thank you so much for sharing your testimony today. You know, each time I hear your testimony, I am speechless and I get so emotional. Um, you know, having journeyed this time with you, I do know exactly what you went through and how humbly and how beautifully you have given glory to God each time. So may he bless you for your strength and may you continue to be an inspiration to all those around you. Yes, Max. I stand to glorify our God in everything I do for his mercy and kindness is overflowing on me and my family. Amen. Amen to that again. So, Charles, if there was this one thing that you'd like to tell um, those women watching today who have probably, um, you know, journeyed the same path as you or who are maybe going through the same right now, what advice would you like to give them? My humble advice for women going through a crisis or an illness, like in my case, would be uh, the simple one which I follow, and that is ask seek and find. It is from my favorite Bible verse. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. Matthew 7, 7. Asking for help sometimes is difficult, but you certainly need to ask. But there, there could be certain days that you just can't do it all. Be humble enough to ask. I often reach out to God in prayers and I ask humbly and seek for help. Seek help from your friends and family. There's so much of love around. God has put those people in our lives for a reason. So maybe grab a coffee with a friend you can trust. Pour your heart out to him. It brings so much peace. And bear in mind to keep negativity and negative people at a distance. Let them not disturb your peace. So if you seek, you will find. You knock on those doors, they will open up for you. God will bless you with new paths. For me, it is serving in our parish and giving back to our community, which certainly brings so much joy and fulfillment. Find something that brings joy to your life and follow that. 
I've used this in my everyday life, asking, seeking, and I've certainly found the love of God through the people he has surrounded me with. So trust and believe there is light at the end of every tunnel. So rightly said, Shirley, so rightly said. And I do hope um, our viewers, uh, you know, choose to use the tips given by, by you because I know it will benefit them. But, you know, if I, if I can just share with you that while you were talking and sharing, uh, I was so reminded of mom because that's exactly what she did. You know, she took everything and she placed it at the foot of the cross. And she was always surrounded by positive people. She walked her talk. Uh, what do you think? Don't you think, um, you know? Most definitely, Nats. Mom set a beautiful example for us through her service to God. And she absolutely walked his walk. It's something for us to follow and set examples for our own kids as moms. Yes, how important the role of a mother is today. So, so important. Amen to that. So now coming back to the busy mom part, Shirley. Uh, and I'd like to add a little bit because you so humbly left this out from your introduction. So for our viewers today, I'd like to share that Shirley is, um, she's a very creative person. She makes some um, beautiful cakes, which she so generously makes mainly for family and friends. But she also has come out with a new line of scrubs. She makes some um, sugar and salt scrubs with uh, essential oils that are amazing. And if you'd like to know more, uh, please click the link in the description or on the blog post and uh, to find out more. So yes, um, Shirley, you are such a busy mom with so many roles. Okay, let me just list them out, okay? The role of a wife, a mother, a flight attendant, a passionate baker, scrub maker, very, very active member in the church. You know, I, just listing all of it out is, is so overwhelming for me. How is it that you manage to juggle all of these roles and, um, and, and knowing you, so well i know that you juggle it so well by the grace of god so do you have some tips for us please yes, certainly the grace of god is uh, what helps us nats as moms but if i could give some tips um uh, mine would be uh, a simple one which i follow and that is less is more it's the little things that go a long way especially when it comes to kids and you're spending a little time but quality time with them Maybe a quiet one-on-one -on -one chat, get them to open up to you. Or taking them for a treat, maybe a movie or their favorite restaurant. Or just a simple prayer, a goodnight kiss and tucking them to bed makes them feel so special and really loved. And if we as moms are calm and relaxed for our kids, believe me, they can feed off our emotions. So the same for us moms. If we do little things to pamper ourselves, maybe a trip to the salon, a little facial, a quick nap, or maybe a 15-minute workout to feel energized. Honestly, it's we who set the tone in our homes. So keeping ourselves happy is really key. Another tip, if I could uh, mention, is choosing our battles wisely. Choose to close one eye to smaller issues and focus on the things that really matter. You know, simple things like letting your kids slide when you walk into their untidy room at the end of a tiring day, or just ignoring that person who made a hurtful remark and choosing to forgive over confronting them. These are some ways of keeping us moms sane. What do you think, Nats? Oh, yes. Definitely talking about sanity. And at this time, when we are in like partial lockdown, it is something to really think about, you know. Right. And I do have one more point, Nats, which yeah. is... Uh, uh, quite key, uh, being able to surrender to God and trust in him to pull through has given me the confidence to play the many roles of wife and working mom. And as much as we may think that we can do it all and be in control as moms, the dads play a key role in the support system at home. Them shouldering the responsibility of the household is really important. When I go on flights, my husband will attend to the kids and their school stuff. And when I'm back, I take over. So we each get a break when we need it. You know, we work together to create that balance for our home. 
Absolutely, Shirley. Very well said. Because um, when you work as a team, you cannot go wrong, you know, at the end of the day. So, so good for that. But um, on that note, uh, just like to share that, um, don't you think it's been so much of Mother's uh, Day all around? Don't you think the fathers are feeling a bit left out? <laughs> Do you think I'm, so? sure, I'm sure they're fe definitely feeling a bit left out and especially with Father's Day coming up in June, why don't we do a segment uh, for Father's Day maybe now? Of course, I'm game, I'm game. So for all the fathers watching them, uh, stay tuned because uh, there's something coming up for you in, in June around Father's Day. Lovely, that's nice. See, they'd be so thrilled. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley, for coming on the show. And I will always remember this one. It will be a show that will be uh, close to my heart forever. And um, I will remember this mainly because you have chosen to do this to glorify our God. You have chosen to do this to heal others. And you have taken this big leap of faith and stepped out of your comfort zone after 10 long years. Yes, Nats. It's been my motto. Give thanks with a grateful heart. I'm very grateful for my life, my health, for this journey that God has put me on, that I have gained my strength as a woman and a mom. And grateful moms bring up grateful kids. Oh, awesome, awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, to all our viewers watching uh, today, thank you so much for tuning in. I know and believe that my sister's testimony will really touch a lot of lives. I know that a lot of women will be inspired by what she has shared today. So please feel free to share it with others who would benefit from the same. You know, and um, God bless you, Shirley. We are so, so proud of you for doing what you did today. And on that great inspirational note, till we meet again next week, stay inspired. Stay inspired. Shirley, your family has put together a little Mother's Day surprise for you. Something that I know will touch your heart and will bring a smile to your face so enjoy thank you for helping me with all my problems and being so supportive in everything i do thank you for being such an amazing mom hey mom you are one of the best moms a child could ask for thank you for all the great advice you've given me over the years you truly are a super mom in every sense of the word i love you thank you mom for always being there for me and for caring and loving me all of my life thank you for everything you have done for me my beautiful, caring, amazing, lovely, intelligent, and a super mom. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm ever so grateful to our God for giving you to me and our kids. Super blessed. Love you heaps.